Welcome back to Mathematical Linguistics. Last time we introduced the pumping lemma. Today we're going to use those results to show that human language is not regular. So why not? We can't model language properly with regular languages, and we can't model human language with finite state machines. These are the results we're going to get. So I'm going to show you three major reasons why human language is not regular. Okay, the first one comes from center embedding. So this is an operation in English grammar and other languages where we can do center embedding on sentences. So for example, the captain sailed. So here we have a noun, one, followed by the verb one. So this captain is linked to sailing. The next one, for instance, we can say the captain the sailor liked sailed. So here we have our captain, our noun one, our sailor is noun two, the sailor liked the captain, so this verb is linked to the sailor, and the captain sailed. So the captain is linked to sailed. Okay, the captain, the sailor, the traveler knew, liked, sailed. So this is grammatical, it sounds terrible, but it is grammatical. So we have our noun one, our noun two, our noun three. Well, the traveler knew the sailor, so this verb new is linked to the traveler, liked, well the sailor liked the captain, so liked is connected to the sailor here, and the captain sailed, so the captain is linked to sailed. So this is center embedding, so what we can do is we can keep embedding our nouns and verbs inside each other, so what do we see here? Well we see n1, n2, n3, v3, v2, v1, and this is grammatical in English, we can do this operation. So, we see that center embedding is some number of nouns, then some number of verbs, and they're both equal to each other. Okay, well this looks a lot like 0 to the n, 1 to the n. And was that regular? Well, we showed that no, it wasn't. Because if you took a 0 to the p, 1 to the p, and, well, we have to find our x and y before the pumping length p here. So this means we have some number of zeros, which is equal to y. So if we pumped it down, then we'd have something like 0 to the p minus 1, 1 to the p, which is not going to be in the regular language. And if we pumped it up, we'd get something like 0 to the p plus 1, 1 to the p, which is also not in our regular language. So 0 to the n, 1 to the n is not regular. And noun to the k, verb to the k, follows the same pattern. So, if we take the intersection of these two, and we say, okay, well, we can map our nouns and verbs onto 0 to the n, 1 to the n, then clearly center embedding is not regular. So, we cannot show center embedding with finite state machines. That is impossible. So, how can we have a language that is modeled after finite state machines or with finite state machines when finite state machines can't even capture center embedding. We can produce this and we can understand this, but the machines won't allow it. Okay, and another thing about finite state machines is that we know so many sentences. We have infinite recursion. We can create new sentences we've never heard before. So we need these finite state machines that are so complex and in such large quantity that cognitively it's just not re realistic. It's not reasonable. So what you could say is, okay, well, there's an infinite amount of sentences, therefore you need an infinite amount of finite state machines. So you could say that, but then you could argue and say, well, I'm sure they interact with each other. So for instance, if we take the dog, well, we go up to this machine and we see that they're both pointing to this node here. If we take the cat node or the dog node, we can get to the same point. Uh, but the problem is that uh, this is just starting with the word the, and we can see that if we have a sentence that's a thousand words long, which is grammatically possible, it might not be easy to keep track of, but grammatically we can produce a sentence that's a thousand words long, uh, the finite state machine is just going to be insane. So if this picture to you screams that this is how the mind figures out grammar and holds sentences and meaning. Uh, sorry, that's crazy. So it's not cognitively possible. 
So I know you might be thinking, wait a second, linguistics, this isn't about how the brain works with language, this is modeling. Well, theoretical modeling kind of sucks when language is a biological phenomenon. So biology and evolution produced the capacity for language. Therefore, even though grammar is infinite, we shouldn't say human language relies on this theoretical basis that isn't biologically possible because language came out of us biologically. Therefore, we should at least limit our models. So that way we're working within the realm of cognitive plausibility. Okay, so this is more like a psychological argument than it is mathematical uh, or linguistic oriented, but don't worry, I got one more example for you that is completely based in linguistics. And this is the respectively example. So before I talked about center embedding, and this is a different type of embedding. So let's take a look at this. Jane and Bob cooked and danced respectively. Okay, we have Jane, which is our noun one, and Bob, noun two. Well, Jane cooked, okay, and Bob danced. So respectively means that we maintain the order. So the first verb links to the first noun, and the second verb links to the second noun. So we see this cross serial dependency here. Okay, so it's cross because we have our lines crossing here, and it's serial because it's uh, going in a straight line here. It's serial process. Okay, so what about Jane, Bob, and Sue cooked, danced, and swam, respectively? Well, we have N1, N2, N3. Then we have V1, V2, and V3. So Jane cooks, Bob dances, and Sue swims. Okay, so same pattern as before. What's, what's different about this? What's different about this pattern? Well, the way the nouns and the verbs are linked are different. So we might say, hold on a second, let's forgive the finite state machine that can't produce zero to the n, one to the n. Let's forgive that. Okay, well, how does it capture the fact that the nouns and verbs are linked differently? So it's written the same way as zero to the n, one to the n, but the internal structure of how these zeros and ones are related are completely different. So if we do want to model language with finite state machines and we allow the zero to the n, one to the n to be an exception and we somehow find a way to do it, we still can't capture the difference in structure, but our brains can, our mind does. And just with this word respectively, we have to go back in the sentence to say, okay, those nouns and verbs we heard, they're ordered differently. The order in which they're linked to each other is different. Okay, so that's why human language can't be regular. Three examples, two linguistic, one more psychology, and well, what do we do? Well, maybe we need some grammar system that's a little bit more powerful. So we don't want a system that can produce everything. We want something that's pretty close to what works in the brain, a nice way to model language. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at context-free grammar next, which um, you may remember some rules like this. S goes to NP, VP, VP goes to V and NP. Maybe an NP goes to a determiner and then a noun. So these are the rules that context-free grammar can generate. So is this going to be good enough? Well, we'll take a look and we'll see what happens. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.